Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, so today in my video series, um, I am just going to explain you about uh, external configuration store pattern, which is uh, part of, uh, if I talk about the larger category, uh, this fall under maintenance uh, pattern category. Right? So under this maintenance category, we have this uh, one uh, addition, one external configuration store pattern, which is primarily deal with the configuration, which is uh, required or consumed by uh, multiple microservice application. So this is what uh, this pattern will do that uh, they have to uh, manage. I mean, they have to remove first uh, dependency on the application inside. So you have to segregate the configuration from application and put that configuration from uh, into the external configuration store, which is centralized for all application. It is only meaningful when you have a same configuration and your requirement is that same configuration is required inside n number of multiple microservice application. So this is what uh, I understood. And so I hope you will also feel so. Okay, moving to uh, the purpose of uh, external configuration store pattern. Uh, in my opinion, there are top three purpose, though you can list down many, but uh, uh, to save uh, the time of yours, uh, I just categorized, I just collected three top uh, purpose of external configuration store pattern. The one is, the first is, uh, the first purpose, of course, is uh, to centralize configuration data. So uh, the external configuration store pattern can help to centralize configuration data for uh, microservice architecture. Right? The next uh, purpose, which is to improve reliability. The external configuration store pattern can help to improve the reliability of the microservice architecture. Maybe someone can argue that uh, you are providing the single point of failure, SPF. And that may be, uh, uh, understanding of one aspect like somebody can but uh, our centralized location is not single point of failure because we are managing it in the uh, like uh, if you remember any single point of failure can be managed by duplicate store and that's something like primary and secondary or master and slave kind of structure right so that is something different i'm not going to discuss that part here so to just understand to improve the reliability right and the third is to improve security why I'm talking about security? Because uh, now you have not in place to secure. You have only one place, which is your centralized store to, to preserve, to, to secure, which will ultimately secure the all configuration, all application configuration, right? And by otherwise, otherwise you have to manage all the N microservice application configuration separately to, to secure that configuration, right? That's why this approach is much better for you, right? Now the next thing is um, how this configuration, this kind of configuration can be utilized in your application, a microservice architecture. So I'm just giving one example, like Samsung have um, uh, streaming services, which is called TV plus. So that kind of services, any services, which is microservice based, microservice architecture based, and uh, they have a multiple application, which is uh, uh, using the same configuration uh, to, to make the symmetry of these microservice architecture applications. In that scenario, this is the appropriate way or right approach to handle, to store the configuration, right? So that's why, and that is what I'm just giving you one example. It's not like this is the TV plus uh, service, which is using or which is not using. It is not like that. It is just like any streaming service or any service which has larger scope, which have multiple uh, microservice application and those all service application are managing their own configuration. But in your requirement, you have a uh, config, you have a requirement like you you want to manage this configuration at one centralized space because of the reason is that if you don't manage at one place, you need to modify or update as per your requirement to multiple places, which is inherently giving you lots of maintenance tasks. So so the best solution is to remove that multiple places, put it in the centralized place, and every application have to use that central configuration. That's it, right? So this is what is proposing you. Now, next is uh, how you will implement. Like this is very rough idea and very abstract idea. I'm not giving you the detail. Why I'm not giving you detail? Because it depends on contextual information, like what you want to provide. There are so many approach, like um, there are AWS functionality available. If your, your cloud services are using AWS infrastructure, then AWS is already providing AWS secret managers, secrets manager. Uh, if you are using a Azure infrastructure, then Azure infrastructure or platform, then Azure Key Vault is might be solution for you, right? To maintain this centralized configuration, or you have any third party like uh, HashiCorp or anything, which, or you want to build your own 
uh, centralized um, configuration is stored. You can also do that thing, right? It depends on your requirement, how uh, your current infrastructure is, and uh, what is the best suitable environment for you, right? Moving to next point is configuration the external configuration store. Configure the external configuration store. The external configuration store will need to be configured with the configuration data that you want to close, want to store, right? The third, next, moving to next point, update the microservices to retrieve configuration data from the external configuration store. The microservices will need to be updated to retrieve configuration data from the external configuration store instead of storing the configuration data into their code. Now the next point is, until now you understood briefly about why, what, and how. Now next thing is, do we have other possible solution for this problem? Do we have any other approach available which seems to be similar to this pattern? So that as an architect, you have a n number of tools to compare on with your context so that you are, you will take the decision uh, and that decision should be, a, uh, what should I say, a, which is the best suitable for your context, right? And I would say that this is a knowledgeable decision, right? So those kind of knowledgeable decisions are only possible if you have a n number of tools in your hand and with your context, you are comparing these tools, how these tools are helping to each other. So in this table, if you look at this, I'm just defining, I have just defined these uh, many possibilities uh, for this external configuration store pattern required. Right? Like if I have to, I mean, if you can compare like scalability, of course you need a scale, scalability in your scenario. You want some centralized store which can be, which can serve to multiple microservice architecture, maybe 100, 200, 500. It, it depends on how big is your service requirement, but I'm just theoretically saying that it can handle any number of application requirements, right? And if I compare this scalability in case of external configuration store pattern, excellent. In memory configuration store, uh, you have, a, uh, again, uh, because in memory, uh, it is very difficult to scale. Uh, so that would be a kind of poor I mean, scalability option if you choose in memory configuration store. The third is distributed. This is also good, but not easy to do it. So that's why um, I'm just putting it into the bracket of good. Yes, if you want to put configuration in your code, this can be scalable, of course. Uh, but again, uh, that would require extra burden of your maintenance cost, right? The second thing is reliability. So in case of reliability, external configuration store is primarily reliable because you are handling the single point of failure, right? So it should be a primarily reliable system. In memory configuration, because you are managing in memory, and in memory is never considered as reliable. So this is again a poor choice. Then distributed configuration system is uh, kind of uh, not poor, but not very excellent because the cost of maintaining distributed configuration store is due to their distributed uh, requirement, distributed structure. It is really, really uh, sometimes very complex to maintain or manage. And then reliability is concerned because it is divided into distributed system, right? Uh, so in distributed, chances of partial failure is also possible, right? Like, um, so so in that case, it is really difficult, for it, right? So that's why. Uh, I can consider as a good, not excellent, right? And configuration as a code uh, is uh, very reliable, considered as it would be very reliable because this is local to your code itself. It is written as a code. It is not in memory, it is in code. So every time you will get the same data and very much uh, no hassle in getting this data. So you can consider always it is a reliable, but yes, of course it is not a secure. It is not a good choice as a secure, as a security requirement, right? So that's right, it has a disadvantage. In case of security also, if you look at the external configuration store pattern, it is excellent secure, right? Uh, in memory, it is poor. Distributed configuration is good. But configuration as a code, it is not excellent, right? I would not say it is a purely uh, bad idea, but yes, it is not a very good idea, very excellent idea, of course. Then flexibility, uh, external configuration store is, uh, are you going to flexible enough? Like, uh, do you have any choice as an application developer? Do you have lots of choice? No. So it only depends like if all applications have different same requirement change, then only you are flexible to get it, things done by just changing the external application. So by flexibility means, I would say this is not an excellent part, right? Excellent uh, way of doing it. So that's why it is considered as a good. Uh, if I talk about the in-memory, that flexibility is um, very high because um, um, you are free to take any kind of uh, in-memory, either it is Redis or any other uh, memory, memcache or anything else, right? Um, 
it won't impact uh, overall feature of this this kind of feature implementation so that's why this is excellent um, considered as an excellent the next thing is um, i would say um, ease of implementation so see in in case of ease of implementation uh, configuration as a code is very easy to implement in memory is also easy but ease of implementation in case of external configuration and storage is not easy because now you have a uh, remote centralized location and you have to manage configuration from there so you need to implement separately and then that separate store requires multiple things it should not single point become single point of failure it not it should not be uh, uh, unsecure it should not be providing any downtime so lots of distributed uh, uh, system challenges because then uh, you have to work as a client service concept between and your interaction between your client which is application and service which is centralized location these two should work uh, uh, very synchronized way right so that's why this implementation part is little difficult in this scenario and the same goes to uh, distributed configuration store also now the point is which one you should consider it depends on your quality attribute so as an architect if you look at if you are looking for scalable reliable and secure then external configuration store pattern is a right choice for you right so that is what i am understanding it let's move on so uh, this much is the external configuration store pattern i hope you can uh, theoretically understood this in the next lecture in the next video i will try to give you hands on of this external configuration store pattern so that you can uh, able to understand theoretically and practically of this pattern thank you thanks for thanks for your time and i hope that you are able to learn things and you will implement that things in your day time in, in your uh, i mean area of work thank you thanks a lot bye take care and yeah one thing uh, please subscribe my channel and also try to give the feedback which you want like what is your requirement so that i can customize my video according to your requirement it it, it will be beneficial for you and it will be beneficial for me also because i have to also understand what kind of challenges people are facing what kind of requirement they have as a sometime as a sender we don't know how receiver is receiving my content so that is why i am requesting all of you please uh, put your comment feedback related to content so that i can update my content accordingly thank you thanks a lot bye take care